Okay, the gingery fire furnace or blast furnace. Okay, uh, as you can see what I've done here is I've just taken a strip of aluminum and uh, drilled some holes, bolted it together to give it a form on, I had to use two strips and there's three, three bolts in this one. Now what I've done is just gone along and drilled some holes and used some steel cable and I've sort of made tic-tac-toe, you know, meshes in here. The thing of it is with refractory cement, it'll hold, but you get more than an inch uh, and a quarter, inch and a half distance uh, between it and something to support the refractory cement. Once it's dried, it, get, it crumbles. So what this is doing is providing, we're going to set a cup in here. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect, but we're going to set a cup in there to provide a hole while we ram the sand up. Probably not that cup. Uh, but anyway, um, we're going to ram sand up in here, wet sand mixed with refractory cement. And then I have a couple of handles I still have yet to drill holes for in the side that I'm gonna put in there so I can lift it off easily. Uh, this thing is going to sit on top of our blast furnace down there. So uh, uh, you can actually fire the blast furnace without the top, but the top holds the heat in and it melts metal very quickly. So uh, this is the first stage in our blast furnace and we're gonna be melting aluminum and then building some good old shop machines. Okay, here you can see I've got everything together. Everything, this is ready for ramming up. Okay, I've got my handles uh, set in there. It kinda looks like ears. But anyway, uh, these things are going to allow me to lift it off of there because this thing is extremely hot. Now, Ginger used a couple of tabs on his with the cord run through the tabs, I think, uh, or a, a metal handle on there. Uh, this is just a, a thing, a preference that I have because I worked in foundry and this is kind of the setup we had. Uh, I think it's a little easier to construct. But anyway, uh, this is what I've got. I'm gonna go ahead over here I've got the fire clay mixed in with my sand. I'm gonna mix it in real good and then put some water on it. And then we're gonna take it back over here and ram it up. And tomorrow will be ready. After setting overnight, it'll be ready to bake. Okay, uh, I've got the sand mixed with the fire clay. Uh, you wanna get a uniform texture or uniform color. Uh, you don't want like there to be loose sand streaks in it. Uh, I did this by using a trowel. I started with that bucket, but the bottom broke out of it. So I transferred it to this one. Now we're gonna add some water to it, enough to make it pliable, uh, not too much water, but uh, I, I know how to do these things because <laughs> I worked in a foundry. Um, but anyway, once we get the sand to the right consistency, we're gonna take it over there and then we're going to put it in the mold that we have made our uh, top matrix. So anyway, uh, I'm gonna do that right now. And also when you're mixing this up, up dry, have a face mask on this, uh, the fire clay is silica and it'll get in your lungs and mess you up. Okay, here we are all rammed up. Um, the sand itself is a little more pliable than you might think would be suitable for something like this. But the thing of it is, uh, it's gonna sit overnight. It's gonna dry a little bit. We're gonna put some plastic over the top because this is Cheyenne, Wyoming, to prevent it from drying a whole lot. Now, um, when we let this sit, the clay's gonna solidify a little bit and bond to itself. And then when we slip it in the oven tomorrow, it'll heat up really nicely and we'll have a nice uh, foundry furnace top. And here it is all wrapped up and covered with plastic. I used to use the kitchen trash bag and then I cut a little X in there and slid this down over it. Now, as you'll see around there, there's some water seeping out the bottom. Uh, probably got maybe a little too much water in the mixture, uh, more than I probably should have, but again, it will seep out of the bottom. Now, uh, in Cheyenne here, where it's really dry, this stuff will evaporate like quickly. So, uh, you know, Better a little too wet than a little too dry because if it's a little too dry, it won't adhere. The clay won't adhere. So anyway, uh, that's setting up. We're going to let it sit overnight and tomorrow morning. 
we're gonna put her in the oven. I've got a pizza, it on a pizza pan there, as you can see too. Okay, uh, it has uh, about 16 to 18 hours has passed. Uh, I let this set overnight. One of the interesting things uh, about this, I'm pressing on the top of the sand has really cured at this point. It's become very hard, but it's still moist and wet. So this is what we want because uh, the clay has, has bonded to each other. The water, as you can see, there's no more water down here. It is all gone. Um, the mixture is really hard. Yesterday when I first did this, you could just press your finger right down in there. It was not very uh, stable. But now that it's cured, I've got the oven primed at 250 degrees. We're going to slide this whole pan in there. Of course, we're going to remove our cup and we're going to remove the plastic. And we're going to slide this thing in there. And um, it's going to cook for about uh, three hours. It's about 9 a.m., 9.15 a.m. right now. It'll be in there till about 12.15. Then I'm going to jack the temperature up to 400 and let further bake for about five hours so in the end we're going to have a really good solid uh furnace top we're going to do something similar to this except this is going to be fired by charcoal with the top on with this on top of it so um when we're finished we're going to have a working foundry furnace well which will allow us to melt metal of course we're going to have to make a crucible and i'm not really quite certain how i'm going to go about that there are a couple different ways but uh, I'll get to that in another video. But uh, the sand is, is really hard. It's cured and that's what we want. So it's going to make a really good top. And uh, we'll be able before long to start melting aluminum, which will allow us a tremendous amount of flexibility in what we can do to make our own shop equipment and tools. So stay tuned. Um, I'm going to put this in the oven and... We'll resume the video tonight when it's all done. Okay, we're all finished with our uh, our top to the uh, blast furnace. It was a success. Uh, basically what I did was uh, I put it, I first of all, I did my sand mixture like I described earlier and then I put it in here and I rammed it up with a wooden stick. Now, uh, of course, we let it sit 24, uh, you know, probably 20, 16, 20 hours to cure. Then I popped it in the oven, uh, preheated the oven at 250, left it for three hours, then cranked the temperature for to 400 for six hours. A uh, long process, but uh, it's a success. Basically, as you can see here on the side, uh, it's got the hole that will allow the uh, fire to come out the top in the heat. All right, uh, the handles that I set in the side were a departure from Mr. Gingery's original uh, design. He had some tabs that uh, he had screwed in and there was a, a handle over here. The one thing I don't like about his design is when you pick it up, that handle is right above the blowhole. You've got about 2,300 degrees coming out of there. Uh, it's gonna get really hot fast. Um, so anyway, uh, I, my handles in the side worked really well. The next step is to get our main, the main body of our furnace ready, which is going to be this bucket. I've got a, this is just an HVAC uh, tube. And what I'm gonna do is ram up some sand mixture just like this, and I'm going to uh, pack it around this form. Of course, I'm gonna have to put some wooden supports on the inside to keep the, the form from collapsing. Uh, anyway, and make sure that uh, the fluted part up here is at the top, otherwise we probably might not be able to get out very easily. But one thing I like about these the HVAC things is you can collapse them. So once I get the sand uh, rammed up, I don't have to worry about pulling it out and maybe scoring the sides of it. So that's what we're gonna do. Then we're gonna set the top on top of it. Of course, we're gonna ram it up. We're gonna let it sit overnight. Then um, we're going to uh, set the top on it, connect it to our uh, air supply, put some charcoal in there, light it up, and it's gonna cure this sucker. And we're gonna have a uh, blast furnace to where we can melt metal. And uh, one of the deficiencies in my shop right now is 
I don't have a very good metal working capacity. I have the knowledge to work metal, but I don't have the tools. Uh, I want to build a Dave Gentry's lathe. Now, a lot of people have uh, said that uh, Dave Gentry's lathe is uh, not accurate. It's accurate for enough what I need it for, and it's going to be a real cool process to build it from scratch, and it's a bragging piece, you know. So anyway, um, that's what we're going to do in the next part of this is we're gonna ram this thing up. Um, I'd like to, uh, if you didn't don't know about the Dave Gingery set of uh, books, uh, you should check them out. Just type in Dave Gingery, G-I-N-G-E-R-Y. Uh, he's a former, he's a, he's a not alive anymore. He passed away several years ago. But uh, I was, um, I was, uh, I lived in Springfield and um, I never met him but he was a wizard in the shop, a real wizard. Let me get myself on camera over here so you can see me. Dave was a real wizard in the shop and uh, he he wrote several books. Uh, if you remember, if you were alive during the 80s, 70s and 80s and you saw in Popular Mechanics, rare technical books, you know, that, that was what they were talking about. It was mostly it was the Gingery series of books. Uh, his son Vincent is still alive and he has some books out. You can still buy these things both directly from Vincent Gingery, I think, and also at used book places all over the web. Uh, the book on the charcoal foundry is very helpful. The one thing that I did change, um, I thought Dave's, being a, a person who was actually worked in a foundry, I thought Dave's mixture was a little heavy on uh, fire clay. Fire clay is very expensive. It's about 40 bucks a pail, and the pail is only about like this big. Uh, I used a little less than half on this. I think Dave would have called for more, but as you can see, it worked out fine. Uh, that's just my experience in a foundry. You know, I, I kind of knew how much to put in. Uh, I'll maybe go into a little bit more detail when I do the uh, first part. Okay, it's time to start thinking about a air supply for our foundry furnace over there. Now, um, basically, if you want to do this on your own, this will work just fine. Just make sure it's got a cool setting on it. Uh, if it runs hot, most hair dryers will shut down. Uh, they have a safety feature on them. But this one would be fine. This one was probably what I'm going to use to fi initially fire the furnace um, at first. But uh, I want a little more professional setup. So, what I've done here is I've uh, kind of salvaged a fan motor from a pretty good sized circular fan. And what we're gonna do is uh, we are going to come over here and using this board, I've already taken, and as you can see, scribed out sort of a circular pattern there. We're gonna cut that up and that is going to be the internal rotor for the blower. And I'm gonna cut that out so uh we'll get on that real quick and get that done okay um i've already cut this out and cleaned it up on the uh stationary belt sander so what we're going to do basically is take some pieces of metal and cut them out and make uh little fins that are symmetrically placed around this uh, the amount of air that's pushed through depends on how many fins you have. Now, for this application, we don't need a tremendous uh, amount of air going out. Just roughly equivalent to a hairdryer. I mean, you could engineer this thing to where it was, I mean, almost jet propulsion, you know, but uh, we don't need that. Also, it depends on how fast, <coughs> of course, the fan is turning, fan motor is turning. And uh, we're going to build a little metal housing to put this in and then have an air outlet. So uh, this should work really well. Okay, what we're gonna do here is basically we've got our form sit down inside there. We're going to pack sand around it now. To keep the form from collapsing as we pack the sand, I'm going to use, I'm gonna cut some uh, support beams to put in there. Now, Mr. Gingery, <clears throat> he had a top and a bottom uh, top with a hand piece, but what the difference being is he had to pull his out um, I'm not going to pull mine out. I'm just going to go in there and collapse it and it will be fine. 
So uh, we're gonna mix our sand up now. Okay, I've got a little sand in there. Um, is it enough to do that? Uh, I don't know, I hope so, but I've got more sand. Um, now, when we're mixing this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off here. And I've got some kitchen stuff here. And we're gonna just start putting some, some of this in here. One, two, see. Three, four, and I'll go five. Okay, so that's about enough now. When you start mixing this, here, my finger's in the way. When you start mixing this, you wanna be sure that your nose is covered with a face covering because this silica is not good for your lungs. Uh, once it gets wet, you can do anything you want. But uh, so I'm going to mix this up until it's a really good uniform color, color, and then we'll get back. As you can see, the clay is effectively mixed with the sand. Now, when we go to to put the water on this, the best thing to do is just to dump it all on the floor and uh, mix it that way. I'm trying to mix with the water, and the pail is not very effective. And uh, so, but right now we've got to switch and go over and make our inside supports to that thing. So here we go. Okay, using a handy dandy hole saw, I have chopped a hole in the side of this and uh, this will accommodate our pipe. Now you might notice that the pipe is, uh, of course, not fit to that hole. That was the closest I could get with the hole saw. Uh, it doesn't really matter because it's just gonna be surrounded and held in place by uh, the sand mold. Okay, now I've wetted it down and uh, you, at this point, uh, because there really isn't any place for the water to go, like there was, you know, where it seeped out underneath the, uh, the sides in the last one, it's got no place to go but the bottom of the bucket. Now, uh, if you've ever played at the beach or in a sandbox and you know, wetted sand down and molded it, you know what to do. Uh, too much water is not good. Okay, so get it to that consistency where, now this stuff is really coarse sand. So, you know, when it just kind of, it won't hold together really well, but it'll sort of stick together. That's when it's ready. So we're gonna pack the furnace now. Okay, as you can see, uh, ultimately this is where my efforts have brought me. I came close. Now I'm gonna have to mix up a little more. You see what I'm doing here? I'm just kind of tramping down around the sides, really packing it. And I need about probably two to three inches more around the top. So I'm gonna mix that up right now. And when it's all finished, I'll talk a little bit about the process. Uh, pretty much a good uniform pack all the way around. Amazingly, I really, this is a real stout piece of metal and I didn't have to brace it at all. That's really good. So, uh, see you in a bit. Okay, we're all finished with our operation. Not a lot of sand left over. Uh, I do have some fire clay left over, but not enough to make a, a crucible. I'm probably gonna go with a metal crucible. But anyway, the next step here is to wrap it up just like we did the, the there at the top, just like we did the, uh, the, uh, the lid and uh, make sure it doesn't dry out and seal it up real good and we're going to wait overnight and then we're going to fire it now when we fire this thing tomorrow it's not going to take nearly as long like it's not going to take the whole day like it did on the lid because the fire inside there is going to burn about six to seven times hotter than the highest setting on my oven so anyway uh i'll get that going and i'll get back in with you tomorrow and we'll get ready to light this thing up okay. Okay, as you can see, um, I had to end up going with cling wrap, and what I did was to seal it off, um, I spread the cling wrap around it. Cling wrap, wrap sticks to itself. So what I did was I tied uh, one string of twine around the lip of the bucket and the other around the form, and then I slid everything down. Uh, the cling wrap doesn't give me as tight a seal as I would like, 
but it's still going to be still moist enough to set up tomorrow on top there. The main top is the main thing you have to worry about. But uh, also the pipe is fitting pretty loose uh, in there. That's no big deal because we can mix up some of our fire clay and use it as putty around that to solidify it tomorrow when we fire it up. So we'll see you tomorrow at the fire. All right, it's the next day. And uh, first thing we need to do is we need to uh, remove the form from the pot. And also I've mixed up some fire clay and I'll show you that in just a moment. And uh, we're going to uh, use it to pack around the pipe so it'll solidify because it's really difficult to get the pipe solidified in that sand mixture. So uh, let's get the form out. I'm already set up with my uh, hair dryer and everything out there. And so uh, I'll meet you there. All right, as you can see, uh, form, you know, set the sand up really nicely. It came out of there very nice. Um, now, uh, here is the fire clay. Uh, just straight fire clay and water, mixed it up with, uh, to the consistency of peanut butter. As you can see, my hair dryer's over here. It's duct tape to a plastic hose. And you might be thinking, well, plastic hose, won't that melt so close to the furnace? Uh, no, not really, because um, basically, the air is all going this way and there's no heat to transfer into the hose. It's all being transferred in the furnace. So while it will get hot, it won't melt. So anyway, I'm gonna duct tape that in. And after I do this, then we're gonna fire it up, put some charcoal in there and fire it up. All right, the furnace has been fired about 15 minutes. Uh, it is working. Uh, the coals are burning inside. It's producing a lot more smoke than I had uh, anticipated. Uh, but anyway, it could be because of the nature of the charcoal, maybe a little wet. Um, but anyway, it is working. The furnace is getting really hot. Uh, if you put your hand right by the blowhole, you can't hold there for just a few seconds. Really hot. It's going to really bake this thing up good. Uh, furnace is well on the way to being completed. So now in Gingery's book, he shows some fire coming out the top of his. That may have been in an initial firing. When I uh, put my, when I lit the coals up and uh, applied the uh, jet blast from the hair dryer, it put the fire out. So I had to wait a little bit until the fire died down, but it's working well. I can look down in there and see glowing coals. Okay, we're about 45 minutes into the process and there is a visible fire, I don't know if you can see it, coming out the top of it. Um, that's what I was really looking for. Uh, the charcoal put off a lot of smoke and uh, that means it's wet, store-bought charcoal. Now, I have some dry stuff over here that uh, as a result of some of our fires uh, you know, uh, burn pit stuff that I threw in there and it really took, and so if you can see down in there, it's, yeah, there it is glowing, okay. That's what we're really looking for. It took a little bit to get here, but this thing is at full power now. So, uh, probably another hour and a half and this thing should be cured. <laughs> 